Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And For our Daily Word today, we're in Genesis 32, and what I'd like to do is share verses 22 to 28 with you. And then let's talk about how it is that with God, our losing is actually winning. So if you would, hear the word of the Lord. During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servant wives, and his eleven sons, and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp. And a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of socket. Then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? the man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Well, friends, I think it's fair to say that this is... uh, this, this is a strange and interesting thing, isn't it? Um, and it, it seemed to me that the, uh, probably the best way to approach this is to ask and answer some questions about the story. And that is, first of all, uh, who is the man? Who is this man that Jacob wrestles? Well, he is not just a man, and he is no mere angel. As a matter of fact, He is not a created being at all. He is the angel of the covenant. He is the word of God, the son of God, the second person of the Trinity, of God Almighty. He is God himself come in the form of a man. If you'll notice in verse 30 of our passage today, it says, Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. In addition to this, we we actually find mention of this this happening, this event, in the book of the prophet Hosea, in chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. We read there, even in the womb, Jacob struggled with his brother. When he became a man, he even fought with God. Yes, he wrestled with the angel and won. He wept and pleaded for a blessing from him. There at Bethel, he met God face to face, and God spoke to him. So again, what's affirmed here is that this is not just a man, not just an angel, the angel of the covenant, the Son of God, come in the form of a man. So... Jacob wrestles with God himself. Uh, So, so of course, the next question is, um, why? (laughs) Um, Why does Jacob wrestle with God? Well, uh, I think that we could say just it seems by nature he is uh, a wrestler, right? He's ornery and... uh, this is just kind of what he does. He has this characteristic that in some ways is admirable, this quality that he, he meets every challenge. He uh, has, has this kind of self-reliance that he's going to make things happen. And now he does have faith in God. I think that we have to acknowledge that. He, he has a relationship, but we also see him, see him trying to retain um, some independence right, to retain some of that self-reliance, to retain uh, really a measure of control over, over his life. I, I'd like to, to point out to you from the encounter that we know is the, the stairway between heaven and earth. Uh, during that encounter, or rather in, in the aftermath of that encounter, in Genesis 28, and this, uh, this would be beginning of verse 20. I, I just want you to, to listen, if you would, to the, the number of ifs 
if God does that, if the, God does this other thing, there is this sense of, uh, of kind of a retention of control um, that he's, he's sort of reserving the right to, you know, to pull the, the plug on this relationship if he's not satisfied with how God performs. If God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey, and if he will provide me with food and clothing, and if, he, if I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will certainly be my God. So again, lots of ifs, lots of conditions here, a lot of retention of, of control and self-reliance. So that's thinking about the question, why did Jacob wrestle with God? But let's think now for a minute in the other direction. Why is it that God wrestled with Jacob? Well, the Lord knows that it's time to bring Jacob to a new place of relationship, to a, a deep, trusting relationship, uh, a relationship where he is in full reliance on God. Jacob would not stop wrestling with God in his own strength. So the Lord showed Jacob just how fragile, how fleeting his strength really is. He, he took his hip out of joint. And now I, I'm not a, a wrestler. I've never really had the desire to, <laughs> to wrestle with anybody. So I don't I don't know completely how this works, but I'm pretty sure if your hip is taken out of joint, you're out of commission in terms of wrestling. There's no way, there's no way really to apply enough leverage to wrestle somebody uh, to somebody down. And and so um, Jacob can no longer wrestle. He can really only do one thing, and that is cling. He can not wrestle, but he can cling to God, and he clings to God for a blessing. And when the Lord gives him a new name, he says that he has fought with God and won. And that's an interesting thing because, you know, it's not like he pins God down. It's not like he overpowers God. As a matter of fact, he comes away with a, a pretty significant limp. His his hip is thrown out of out of socket, and 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 so in what sense then could we say that he has won? And really, only in one sense. That is that he he is won by losing, right? He is won by learning full reliance on God. And so the question then becomes, you know, wh what about us? Uh, have we come to that place of, of relationship? Paul talks about this at the beginning of 2 Corinthians in chapter 1. This is verses 8 and 9. We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result... We stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. It says, we, as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God. You know, if you um, are listening and you're a part of our church family, I I'm sure that one of the things that you have noticed is that there are, are many uh, older people in our church. One of the things that you may or may not know is that we have a, a number of folks in our church who are recovering addicts. And from a worldly perspective, uh, some might look at, at that composition and say that this is uh, weakness. But in reality, uh, this is immense strength because um, we're talking about so many who have a limp. We're talking about so many who have been through, been through so many things 
to where they have learned through hardship, through struggle, through wrestling, through hurts that they've been through, have learned to rely only on God. This is immense strength because it is to apply, access, walk in the power of God Himself. At the end of 2 Corinthians, toward the end, in chapter 12, Paul's talking about this, this very serious physical issue, illness that he has. He calls it his thorn in the flesh. And he says this, beginning in verse 8, Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And he says at the end of that section in verse 10, he says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. So friends, um, I want to encourage you. If you feel like, um, metaphorically speaking, that you walk with a limp, um, know that that is not weakness if, in fact, through whatever it is that you've gone through, through whatever scar that you bear, whatever wound, whatever illness that you might have, that that is not weakness, it is strength, because you have learned to rely only on God. And, and if you still are one who believes that you are exceptionally strong and self-reliant and you haven't come to this place, God bless you, you will. Uh, Lord willing, you will come to this place. Uh, something will happen. You'll be hurt somehow. You'll lose some strength, some ability, and you will have a choice to become hardened and angry about it or to offer that weakness to the Lord. To, yes, limp, but to limp while you're leaning on God while you're holding on to His hand and relying on His strength. And may it be so in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. And friends, till we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.